Beautiful morning. It's a beautiful morning. It's so amazing to have a revelation of God's love and grace. It's so amazing. To refresh this morning by this revelation. So today's topic is from Christ to Adam, from Adam to Christ. So this is a difference between divinity and religion. This is a difference between divinity understanding of God and humanity understanding of God, which is religion. Religion is humanity understanding of God. Whether it is in the form of church or in the form of worldliness, is human comprehension of God. The brain capacity, you know, transmission of God. The way humanity understands God. Everyone has different opinion of who you are. That is different from who you truly are. That is also how everyone has different opinion of who God is. That is different from who God is. Alright? So, whether in the form of a church or in the form of worldliness, but as long as it's in, in the circle of humanity, that is religion. Religion is when Adam had a different opinion of God. You know, Adam thought that he wasn't like God. God created him in his own image and in his own likeness. But Adam thought, Adam wasn't convinced. Alright? The power of the, the power of the enemy is your ignorance. Yeah. The strength of humanity has been knowledge. Knowledge has been the you know God saves you by knowledge. Mm -hmm. The Bible says He sent His word and His word heals us. Mm -hmm. Alright? So what Adam was not sure of was his problem. He wasn't sure that he was like God. That was why the serpent came to him and said, Do you want to be like God? He wasn't sure of who he was. He wasn't sure of who God was. So self-awareness is so important. But this is not what I'm, 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 I'm doing this, this morning. Self-awareness in God's eyes. Because there's a difference between self-awareness in the self, in the humanity perspective, and self-awareness in God's perspective. There's a difference between knowing yourself in this world and knowing yourself in Christ. Very different. Alright? But Adam had a problem. Adam had a self-awareness problem. Adam did not know himself because he didn't know God. Because to know God is to know you. You are the true image of God. To know God is to know you. When you have a right understanding of God, you will be restful. You will be restful. This rest we talk about is understanding. When you have a right understanding, a right perspective of God, that God is rest, you will rest. When you think God is works, you will walk. Alright? So when you think God is humanity, you will be in works. When you think God is eternity, you will be in rest. So, what is the difference between Divinity and religion is just an understanding. The way religion is human understanding of God. Divinity is eternity perspective of God. Amen. Alright. So today's topic is from Christ to Adam. From Adam to Christ. So this is opposite of humanity understanding of humanity. This is opposite of religious understanding of humanity. We are brought up with the understanding that our life began from Adam to Christ. Please, I uh, just want you to concentrate. We are brought up on knowing that our life we are brought up knowing that our life began from Adam to Christ. That is humanity perspective of us. That is religious perspective of humanity. 
we were brought up knowing that Adam was our origin. <laughs> this is what I was taught all my life in the perspective of Christianity and religion and all that. We are brought up knowing that Adam was our life, Adam was our origin. We are humanity, you know, trying to have a divine experience. We are humanity in a journey to divinity. That is what we are brought up. But today's topic is from Christ rather. It means that divinity is that our life began from Christ, not from Adam. So when you get this formula, you've gotten the divinity perspective of God. Your life did not, was not originated from Adam. Adam was not your beginning. Christ was our beginning. Boy, it is amazing. I was raised understanding that Christ was my redemption. Adam was my corruption. But I came to understand that before my redemption, that was my creation. Before Christ was my redemption, he was my creation, he was my foundation, he was my origin. All right. So if you understand these two things right now, if you understand this formula, you it have been set right to you that your life is from Christ to Adam, from Adam back to Christ. Our life is from divinity to humanity, from humanity to divinity. Our life is not from, from humanity, divinity. Our, we are a divine beings, having humanity experience, boy. If you understand this, you understand you are just in, you are in, what do you call, what is called this? You are in an, in an adventure, in an adventure in this life. Alright? If you understand, you, if you understand that you are a divine, you are a divine being having humanity experience. You are not a human being trying to have divinity experience. You are a divine being, an eternity being, having humanity experience. You know, going through humanity journey, boy, you are not a humanity, you are a divine being. You are from God, little children. He said you are of God, little children. You have overcome the world. Greater is he that is in you than he that, than he that is in the world. Mean that you hear from God. You are from God, little children. Okay? So, if you understand that you are not humanity, Having divinity experience, trying to reach to God, trying to reach to God, that is what religion does, trying to reach to God through praying and fasting, lifting your hand, all this stress. No, you have divinity. <sighs> having, a, having a humanity experience is a journey, humanity. What it means your life is not humanity. Your life was already finished from divinity side. You're just like someone who came for a tourist. Just came for a tourist in Namibia, you're just going around experiencing life. You're not from here. You're not from Namibia. You're experiencing everything. So whatever that happens, it's fine. My life. I already, I already have a life somewhere before I came here for a vacation. Get me? So you will you will not take too much serious of what is happening in the vacation because vacation is a momentary experience. Yeah. You know, so you will have a restful heart. Okay, let's just use this as an example. You're coming from America to, to uh, Namibia. You already, you already bought your ticket going and coming already before you came. So you're not going to struggle to go back to your country. You're just here, just experiencing things. Your mental life is not here. So if you understand this perspective of I am from divinity, I'm a divinity, having humanity experience, you just take, let everything go. This mistake comes and go. Good, you know, good choices, good days come, good, bad days come, you know, you just enjoy everything. So, but we missed it from the perspective that we are from Adam. We are not from Adam. I'm going to show you a scripture, a few scriptures that shows that, boy, the divinity perspective of you is that your origin is God. Your origin is Christ, not Adam. Christ did not come into your life just to rescue you. He was your origin. He was your origin. We're going to understand that because before you died, you were alive, right? Yeah. Before you were lost, you were already 
existing. That you can, that is not, nothing can be lost if it's not existing. That cannot be a death if something is not living. Do you get me? That you cannot be that like something has died if it's not alive already. So before you lost it in Adam, you had it in Christ. So if you get this, everything really is said alright. You understand? I am beyond what I see. I'm beyond the I'm beyond the circumstances in my life. I am beyond you are a, you are a heavenly treasure in in the human body. This perspective will help you. Life is spiritual, life is not religion. Life is spiritual, life is divine. Life is not religion. Religion is, 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 is thinking that you are, you are not like God. You want to be like God, like Adam. Adam was already like God. He was already, he was made in the image of God and in the likeness of God. He was already like God. He was meant to rest in who he was. But he, because of not understanding, so he wanted to be like God and his religion. <laughs> Any day you want to be saved, that is religion. Going around and telling people to be saved, that is religion. Divinity is <laughs> making people realize just the way they are. I'm not talking about Christians. I'm not talking about Christians. I'm talking about humanity. Making humanity realize you are saved. You are a saved one. Any day you want to, you feel that I need deliverance. I need to be delivered. That is humanity. That is humanity. That is he called call it religion, right? But all of them are in the capacity of humanity. Anything you try to become, anything you try to become, you've lost the formula of your design. You've lost the formula. That was the action of Adam. He lost. He tried to become who he was. Divinity is realizing I am saved. Divinity is realizing I'm delivered. Divinity is realizing I am. Amen. Fine, I'm finished. Divinity is realizing it's fine. Just as I am, I'm enough. Just as I am, in all my imperfection, in all my stupidity, in all my just as I am, I have nothing. I need. Mean, I don't need to change anything to be anything. I am everything. Just realizing, realizing of this is divinity comes on your way. Religion has. It's an obstacle for, for humanity to experience spirituality on earth. Religion is an obstacle because religion tells you you are not. You know, just as Adam was that was 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 naked, as naked as he was, he was perfect. As naked as he was, he was the image of God, he was the reflection, he was the glory of God, he was the reflection of the glory of God. God made him and said, Don't need to, you don't need to 
be a Christian. You don't need to join, join any club, any religion. You don't, it just how to preach, how to reflect, how to transmit the cross. How to, because the cross is the restoration of the beginning, the restoration of the eternity of how we were before Adam. How to, how to transmit it in the life of people is to look at them and say, you are finished, you are enough, you are perfect. In all that you are, and as, as you behold the glory, you are transforming to the same image that you see. As you, as you show them who they are in Christ, you are perfect, you are clean, you are righteous, you are beautiful, you are enough just as you are. As they see Christ, the glory, they are transformed, not, not by trying to transform. Not by trying to transform. So religion is the obstacle of humanity experiencing divinity. Religion is an obstacle, is the obstacle of the manifestation of, of eternity, of humanity, of humanity. So thank God for the growth that is happening to us. Thank God that we have come to understand that we are not seen. You are of God from the foundation of the world. There's a difference between being a Christian and being God's child. You are not, you, you, you are not, you did not become God's child the day you joined the group called Christianity. Amen. You are God's child from the foundation of the world. You are God's child from the foundation of the world. If you belong to any club, if you belong to any religion, I call them club. You join your club, but that is not the beginning of your life. Amen. That is not the beginning of your journey with God. Amen. That is not. So let let us get it right that we are from Christ to Adam and from Adam to Christ we are not from Adam to Christ yeah, yeah, yeah. our foundation, our origin is God our origin is God yeah. when I use the word our I'm not talking about Christians I'm talking about every child of God yeah. <laughs> so when you look beyond Christianity look beyond humanity now you see divinity the God of all creation. God, you see the God of all creation. You don't need to. You don't need to change anything to be anything. Adam, you are the image of Christ. You are the image of Christ. You are the image. This is the gospel. You are the image of Christ. Just as you are. Just as you are. There is a place of growth. There is a place of change. Even the true change comes when you understand you are. Not you will be. The you miss the foundation when you when you when you feel you will be when you when you position your mind you will be I want I will be delivered I will be saved I will be redeemed it, that is a mist of the foundation that is a mist of the structure of the design you are already perfect before you become perfect so let's read the scripture let's read Ephesians chapter chapter two verse ten. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, King James Version says, For we are his workmanship. We are the workmanship of God created in Christ. So the day God opened my eyes to see this, it was a wow to me. So he made me to understand that my creation, there's a difference between created and formed. Made me to understand my creation was in Christ. You are the workmanship of God created in Christ. I was created in Christ before I was redeemed in Christ. The, the reason why I there was a redemption was because I was a creation. The reason why I was redeemed in Christ was because I was already created in Christ. You are the workmanship of God created in Christ, in Christ Jesus, unto good works. Which God has before hand for them that you should walk in them. So creation happened. You know, God says, let's create, let's make man in our image. The word make means to create. Alright? He made man in his image. Then he formed the body of man by the dust. There's a difference between the, the created man and the formed man. Alright? So he created us in Christ. 
All these things are very clear, even from the scripture or from anywhere, it's very clear. We are formed, our spirit, we are formed in, we are created in Christ, formed in Adam, formed in the dust. So, and you are not a formed man, you are the created one. Now, the workmanship of God, the word the word workmanship means you are really God's handwork. But this give me gives me an amazing pleasure that I am perfectly and wonderfully made. I am not a mistake. You are not a mistake. You are carefully, you are a handwork of God. You are a handwork. You are carefully designed, carefully orchestrated, carefully constructed, constructed by God Himself. You are. And a little light to you thinking that God made you. Okay, you know, God told and God told Jeremiah, before I formed you, I knew you, before I brought you, before I brought you out, I already ordained you as a prophet and all that. Jeremiah said, But God, I can't speak. But God, I can't speak. Mean that is it what you meant? Is it, if this is what you it mean that you meant me? But what I see is weakness. What I see, what I see is weakness. So it means that, you know, that this this mindset that Okay, before because God made me have to be perfect and everything be moving. God is not religious, God is eternity. Everything is the handwork of God. Everything is so it, it, just as you are right now, as I'm telling you, you are the handwork of God. You are looking at yourself, looking at the things that are not working, looking at this. Yeah, this, this is the glory of God. You don't know. My little light to you that the glory looks like something that you buy a car, you do this, you go, you know, in this place you don't do all this testimony thing because we are in time, we are in eternal life. And in the and eternity, everything is a testimony. Everything that is not like what is testimony? Testimony that is you put a car. No! Ah, do you get me right? If you understand my teachings, yeah. No, everything is a testimony, the closed door is a testimony. Is a manifestation of God's wisdom, yeah. of God's glory in your life. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't, it, it doesn't look like religious. It's, everything is divine. Everything is a reflection of God's wisdom, God's, God's infinite, infinite wisdom in your life. The closed door is a blessing. The, the, he, he made the, the night and darkness. He, night and darkness are the product of God. Complement the night. Night complements darkness. Good time and bad times. Summer and winter. You know, so good times are not the days of God. Bad times are the days of, you know, we in eternity there is no devil, you see? So there is no devil in the bad times. So oh, in eternity is the realm of God alone. He's a God of God in the mountain, God in the valley, God in the good time, God in the bad time. Oh, Like that, black like a like like. <laughs> 
see someone that is blind, that is the glory of God. I'm telling you, when you see yourself being shot, is the glory of God. God is the glory of God. These are the glory the, the Bible said through the church. The church is not a religion. Through the, through the, through the body of Christ, through the image of God, the creation of God, you know, he, he will reflect the manifold wisdom of God. The, the many-sided wisdom of God. Many-sided wisdom. That is why when you see that person that is not working right, you see that go to him, that is sometimes there is something not to be grateful about in him. Those people praise God, they glorify God. Because in the midst of everything that is that is the glory of God revealed. Revealed. Yeah. When you go through the fire, the glory of God. When you go through, so when you understand this, you will not be binding. When things are not working and you begin to praise, you know, God, you are so good to me, you will never fail me. Because you think that is a failure. Failure is the glory of God. You get me, right? So, when you understand, so we are in eternity. For you to arrive to this level, you've come to a realm where there is no devil. You've come to a realm where it is finished. You've come to a realm where is God, all of God is God alone, where there is no death. You've come to that realm where all, all is God. You just know that nothing evil will happen. There is a, there is a realm of the fallen nature, but there is a realm of a redeemed life. So you've come to this realm of redeemed, you have been translated, redeemed from the domain of darkness, been translated into the kingdom of light, where everything is light. Everything. That is when you can truly see God in everything. See God in the delay, in the disappointment, in the dejection and all that, because in this place is life alone. That is eternity that Jesus has restored back to us. That is the glory of God. You begin to see God in a good time. Good times, good days and bad days are beautiful in their own uniqueness. Amen. So, the, let's read another scripture that says, Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 4 to 5 says, According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. So, so this is clear, it is giving you a clear picture that you did not begin from Adam. You did not begin from Adam. Your beginning was not Adam, it was God. According as he has chosen us in him before, before the foundation of the world. I mean to my spirit now, but let us go. Say, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame. <laughs> Jesus. You know, it's even before the cross. See, let me tell you, you we are created holy before the foundation of the world. world holy without blame in him in love. Right? You, if, if you're talking, and if you talk about losing something, you will never lose what you don't have. Yeah. So we lost holiness because we had it before, right? We lost righteousness. We lost being in God's love or whatever. We lost. He said He created us to be holy with that blend. We that was what we have. We lost. That was also what we lost in Adam, right? We we, we are holy and without blend in Christ. Before Adam, he said, He having predestined us in the adoption of the children by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the good will, according to the pleasure, the good pleasure of His will. Let's read Genesis chapter chapter two, verse verse seven, King James version. And the Lord God formed man of the dust. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into him, into his nostrils, the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Now look at what happened. The Lord God formed man, formed the body of man from the ground, right? But man was never alive until God breathed in the real man. Alright, so he said when he breathed, he said the Lord God formed man in the dust of the ground, of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So what made man living was the breath of God, breathed into a formed body. Yeah. Right? So the, the man, man is alive because of the breath from God, right? So where is that breath from? 
God. So man was not from the dust, man was from God. So that is why when you go to the hospital or the one call the name, when you see someone, when you see the breath has left, you can see that the whole body is dead, but the real man is gone. So, so where did the real man come from? He said, and when that happened, he became the living soul. What makes him the living soul? Where did the real man come from? From the ground or from God? From God. Our origin is God. Our origin is God. Our origin is God. You are of God, little children. You hear from God. You came from God. We are of God. If you understand this, if you understand this, so before you became a Christian, you were from God. You are from God. You know, I remember when you know people used to I hear people used to preach with this with this scripture, John chapter one from verse twelve to thirteen. As many as as many that receive him, he has given the power to become the sons of God. You know. So the day you received him is the day you became the child of God. No. No, that means <laughs> you became the, you are the one that chose God. Yeah. He was not the one that chose you. That in religion is that you chose God. Yeah. Divinity is that God chose you yeah. before the foundation of the world. Yeah. So that was also the reason why you choose him, you can also unchoose him. That is why they, they, they have this theory of you must like. <laughs> so you are religion is that you are the one holding on to God. So you can let go anytime. Divinity is that ah he holds you. He holds my life, boy. That was a teaching I got on Wednesday. It was amazing. Beyond all understanding is God. Even when you lose control of it, your life is not on you. Because it, 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 eternity holds you. No matter how terrible people on earth will do whatever they are doing, there is a hand holding this eternity, holding every creator, every creation. It will not, nothing will let go, nothing. So it's, God, is independent, God is independent of us. The eternity perspective of divinity over humanity is that God is independent of man. He deals with man according to his will, not according to man. Amen. Not according to man's perfect or imperfect. That is a beyond, that is a, a realm of divinity. That is beyond your perfection and your imperfection. He holds you. That is, he, he's, he, he's done holding me. Amen. In the midst of anything. So, human understanding of God is that man holds God. Man chooses God. So, but that same scripture, I can actually give you what it means. You know, as men that receive him, is them that he gave the power to give the sons of God. Receive him. Who is the him? Jesus. Yeah. Who is the Jesus? It is finished. Jesus is not a name. Jesus is a revelation. Jesus is a revelation. He is not a religion. He is a revelation. He, is, he said his name shall be called Jesus and he, because he shall save his people from their sin. So in the name is a description of a revelation. Alright? The name is a tag of what he's about to do. You know, so he, Jesus is not a name. That is why when we call him, when you see Jesus as a name, it's religion. When you see him as a revelation, that is divine light. The Bible says in him, you know, he, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. The word was God himself.
God like the Lord. So we are of God from the foundation of the world. So he he formed he formed the body of man and he breathed me in the reason why God came to save us was because it was not just that like we are lost. He was lost. He was lost. We were, we are a part of God. We, the breath of God is God himself. The breath of God is God himself. A part of him was lost. That was why he gave up himself to find himself. See, we, we, we are not just in trouble. God was, God was incomplete. It, it, it was the breath of God into humanity. Into a body called God, God a woman. Yeah. Sure, sure. His image was lost. Do you know that God was imageless until Jesus redeemed man? Oh. God had no image. His image was God. When he looked at himself on the mirror, he doesn't see himself because we are God. We are his image. Without us, there is no image. He has no image. Oh, yes. God has no existence on the physical world except through us. That's why when you talk about the physical coming, it's not talking about the physical coming, it's talking about the revelation of the church yeah. on the earth. Yeah. The, the, the Bible says Christ is the head, we are the body. <laughs> the body, the body of Jesus, you see, all, all eyes are seeing or whatever. I, I know all these revelations, but they are talking about the revelations of the sons of God. Mm-hmm. The all the creations are waiting for the manifestations of the, of the reflection of God through his body through us. This is amazing. So, he, 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 we are the breath of God. We are the breath of God. That is why he said he lighted every man that that comes on earth. God is not. God does not have a life. He is the life. He is the life. God. God does not exist. He is the existence. Whatever exists is God. Yes. Whatever he, he, that is the, whatever that has a breath. God. Amen. It's amazing. I just want you to just don't take it further from there. So, look at what he says here. I just want to clearly give you this picture. You program your mind that your foundation is not Adam. Your foundation is God. It's Christ. Your foundation is from life is a journey from Christ to Adam to Christ. From eternity to humanity to eternity. From God, you know, to man, to God. The journey has never been from from earth, from a physical earth to a physical heaven. The journey has been, you know, the people say heaven is our home. Heaven is our home. Now it depends on what you mean as heaven. Because heaven can be anything. Alright? So, but the religion, you have this today, you see a when they talk about heaven, they talk about a physical place. Heaven is a home. A home is a place you come from, right? A home is your origin. So you will never come from a physical place called heaven. So you are never going back to any physical place called heaven. You came from a being called God. He said he breathed in you into this. So you are from God. You are not from a physical place called heaven. So the place you came from is the place you are going back. Whatever, whether you understand or not, as time goes on, you will. And that has already happened because when Jesus resurrected, we resurrected in him. He took us back to where we came from. He says, I'm going to prepare a place for you in my father's house, in my father's reign, in my father's dimension. We are here is where you're gonna be. And that is not it's no more a future. That was what he said before he went to the cross. And where he is, is where we are. As he is, so are we in this yeah. world. Many things to be said on that. So I want you to just understand right now that you are from God. You are the breath of God. You are the breath of God. So you are as eternity as God. Alright, so, but I, I want to tell you something. So let's read this scripture and I'll tell you a few things right now. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. God told Jeremiah, said, Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. So 
I want you to get that word. I knew you before I formed you. So you are not a formed one. Before you were formed, you were existing. So we are talking about divinity versus humanity. We are talking about revelation versus religion, right? So, before I formed you, I knew you. I knew you means you've been existing before you come into manifestation, child. So you are not a formed being, you are not a formed child. You are the, you don't know, whatever. I knew you before I formed you. I knew you before I formed you. Wow. So I didn't know you when you become a Christian. I didn't know you when you become, when you receive Jesus as your Lord and save, personal Savior. I knew you before I formed you. I knew you before. If you just, we are, all of us are Christians and I love being a Christian, right? So to me, I see Christianity as a club. So just a club, you join, just like you went to school, you don't join one club. But before, before you join that club, you are a, you are a child of the, of the Father. Yeah. You are a kingdom child. Alright, so it's good to join a club, it's good to socialize, it's good to join boys' brigades and, and girls' brigades. You know, it's good. It's good. But, what in the, but, but when, when you are in that club, understand the danger of all those clubs. Because all those clubs claim that they, God, they, God belongs to them. Yeah. Every of these clubs. So let's, let's use the word club now to, re to represent religion, but in Christianity, Islam, and all these things. Islam believes that God and Allah is their own. And when I was in Turkey, they told me if you don't belong, the, the world is coming to a place where anyone that doesn't belong to Islam will die. Because God is a, all every other person is an infidel. Alright, so God belongs to them. Christianity said God belongs to them, but it started from Judaism. Eh? Judaism said God belongs to them. Yeah. <laughs> they said God belongs to them. They said God, every other person was a, was a Gentile. You know, that God Gentile is a, it's like an, 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 an outcast. It's an outcast. <laughs> Even Apostle Paul, you know, I don't want to use this word. You know, he was talking to people of his kind. He just said that, you know, you guys, we are engrafted. You know, the Jews are the real. Real branch. <laughs> he was just talking nonsense, you know. <laughs> he was, he was just talking. He said, "You Gentiles are engrafted. God not allowed." <laughs> because that was that was my said that the Jews, God belongs to the Jews. He's a, he's a, he's a line of the tribe of Judah. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> God has a tribe. <laughs> it's not family. It's not. It's not family. It's not. It's not okay. But even though God begins begins with Jacob, does not mean Esau. It's not God's tribe. God, God, God is a God of order. He's a God of order. He's a God of, he began from somewhere, he, but he's going somewhere. He, he, he chose Abraham, but he's going to be the father, you know, through me, him, and he's going to bless the world. He has the world in mind, even though he chose one person. He has the world in mind, you get me? He chose Mary, that through Mary, uh, uh, Jesus will be born. He had it. Mary was not his focus.
not the church. It's not the church now. It's Christianity from from from, from Judaism. Now that's Christianity. God moved from Judaism to Christianity, and they are still Judaism. Is saying, God, you are saying God. They are not going anywhere, and we are not going anywhere with you. God said, I'm a revelation. I'm not a religion. I am a I am a, I'm a flowing river. Try it. I am a revelation. They said no. We will hold on to you. Religion is something you that doesn't. Nothing goes in. Nothing go, goes out. It's a dead sea. God is having a revelation. I'm a flowing river, flowing nature, and growing me. They said no. He grew above them. Grew to Christianity now. Christianity now came and hold him and said, We belong, we belong to him. He belongs to us. If you don't receive, if you don't need this, then if you don't receive, if you don't belong to Jesus, Christians, you know what? God's child, God will be looking at them. Say, so Joy, I use you. Just like he's using favor right now. <laughs> If your favor doesn't grow, life will deal with you because life grows. Everything is evolving, everything is growing. So Christian is holding. He grew. He grew and all that and he's been growing. So one thing about religion, religion says God belongs to us. The divinity is that we belong to God. God doesn't belong to anyone, but everyone belongs to God. Alright? So even choose any religion, you choose any community or whatever, have an understanding. None of us own God. God owns us all. That is, when, when you are in this, you have, you, have, you have activated divinity over your life. God owns us all. God owns, he's the one that created darkness and light, but he separated darkness from light. Yes, there is a separation from darkness and light, but he created them both. He owns us all. He owns us all. He owns us all. So before I formed you, I knew you, child. I knew you. So, ha, let's get into that word. God knew me before I knew myself. God knew me before I knew him. God knew me before I knew him. This is amazing. You didn't, your life, your life with God did not begin from the day you knew God. It began from the day he knew you. That he knew you. God knew me before I knew him. God knew me before I knew him. That is amazing. Before I found you, I knew you. Before I brought you forth out of the womb, I have satisfied you. Do you see the method of God? He finished with you before he began with you. I have satisfied you and ordained you a prophet unto the next one. I have finished with you. Before I brought you out, I made sure you are finished. This is a divine standard of God. This is a this is the higher law, the higher law, the, the law that keeps me in the midst of my failure, in the midst of my rising and falling. You are finished. That is a higher law. The law of humanity is the law that we keep. The law of religion, but the law of divinity is the law that keeps me because He finished with me before He began with me. You know, I'm gonna end. I'm gonna arrive there unconditionally because He has already finished. If I'm falling out, if I'm falling backward, I'm falling, I'm falling into my destiny. If I'm rising up, I'm rising into my destiny. This is amazing. I know I was studying, I was listening to my message this morning, and I was like, uh, oh, that my message I was using only Joseph as, as, as a prescription. Joseph, God, I know I was listening on Wednesday. I thought that when you only got, when you got your vision, you got your purpose, everything is perfect. Get to understand that. Confusion, confusion, confusion happens most especially when you have purpose and vision. Because God only gives you purpose and vision, you don't know how it happens. God told me, God gave uh, Joseph a, a, a revelation that he's gonna be a king. He saw himself rise up and everybody was falling, falling, falling to him. That was the day his brother told him. He had a vision, he had a purpose. Yeah, yeah. You know, in me, I thought as a, as a God, as a life God, I, I'm bringing people to have your vision, have your Thinking that was the end, God blew my mind. He said, Child, look at yourself now. You have a book, haven't you been confused? I'm confused on my life. <laughs> I've been confused. <laughs>
I have shown to you you're going to be, the whole world is falling down to you, worshipping you. The first thing, the, the, the thing Joseph noticed, his brothers started hating him. Wickedness, hatred, and they, 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 they captured him, they kidnapped him. They threw him in the, in the well, wanted to kill him. From one problem to another, they sold him to slavery. They, you know, that was a way of accomplishing the purpose.
God is our origin and He is our destiny, He is our destination. Everything came from God. So let's read the scripture. I will mean, just round it off. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22 says, For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ all oh, is made alive. So when you have the mindset of it is finished, you understand what the Bible wants to say when they say what they say. So God is not in the realm of promise. It's in the realm of it is finished. The Bible says, there menace therefore a rest to the people of God. Whosoever that enters into God's rest has ceased from his own works. What Jesus says, come to me, you that never let you let me, I will give you rest. Rest is the kingdom of God. Rest is the government of God. Rest is the reign of God. Alright, so anything aside rest. Rest, God is no more in the reign of it will be finished. God is in the realm of it is finished. The Bible says every promise of God that has ever met is yea and amen in Christ. Means that every promise of God from eternity to eternity has been fulfilled in Christ. So there is no more a realm of promise, it's a realm of fulfillment. It's a realm of it is finished. So whenever you whenever you read anything in the Bible, God will do. Just read it with the mindset God has done. So you brought everything into the Bible said every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess Jesus, right? So the word Jesus there is not a name, it's a realm, it's a revelation of it is finished. So what do you do? Whatever you read from the Bible, from the literature, from anywhere, you bring them under the feet. Alright? So whatever you read that whatever you read that says, I will do, you bring it from the feet of it is done. You get me? This is amazing. This is spirituality. This is a the contents. The contents. You know, Bible says, are you reading from when the people say, are you reading from the contents of the Bible? The, the, the content of the, of the word of God, of the eternity word is finished. So anything you read from Paul, you read from this, you, read, you look at this scripture that says, it says, as in Adam, Paul died. Even so in Christ, all is made alive. Get me right. In Christ shall all in the life. Well, <laughs> so when you have a promise that is works, when you have a fulfillment that is rest. Alright, so in Christ all is men alive. So but I want us to see this word. In, in Adam all died. So we didn't die with Adam, we died in Adam. Alright? We didn't die with Adam. We didn't die in Adam. We died in Adam. All right. So we didn't. We didn't rise, rise up with Christ. We rise up in Christ. Now, when you understand in Adam and in Christ, then you will understand that Adam is no. When the world talked about Adam, it's not talking about a person. It's talking about the realm. It's talking about the kingdom. Talking about a system. You get me, right? You're talking about when you say you said in Adam. In Adam, it's not talking about. Uh, uh. All right, so there was a scripture that they used to say that people that uh, the children of uh, Abraham paid tithes when Abraham paid because they were in the loins of Abraham, right? There was you should get that those scriptures. So means that you know Abraham represented a kingdom. All right, so Adam was not just a name; it was a kingdom. It was a reign. It was a kingdom. Adam is the old world. When they talk about an end time, we're talking about an end of a world called Adam, an Adamic generation, Adamic kingdom, Adamic generation, Adamic movement. So if you are still waiting for an end, an end has happened because in Adam, we didn't die with Adam, we died in Adam, we died in a system, we died in a kingdom of death. That was there were two trees standing on the garden of Eden. The tree, the, there were two major trees, apart from other, other trees. Two major specific trees. The, the tree of death and the tree of life. The tree of knowledge of good and evil, which is religion. Religion, knowing good, knowing evil. Yeah. Boy. Eternal life is a real way. Everything is good. In the 
India <laughs> it killed me, right? The good day and the bad day are good in their uniqueness. There's no death in anything. But the religion, the, that's the tree, the tree of death is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Let's leave that. So that tree is a kingdom. It's a kingdom called death. The tree of life is a kingdom called life. Christ and Adam. These are two kingdoms. These are two kingdoms. When Adam died, you know, because we, we are from Christ, you know, but when Adam died, when Adam established a system called death, the Christ was lost. Our image, our perfection and everything was lost. So two kingdoms don't stand the same time. So when the tree of life, when the tree of death was established, the tree of life was diminished. So two kingdoms don't stand. Look at what happened. He said, for in Adam, all died. All died. You know, and in Christ, all is made alive. That means that for, for Christ to come, Adam has ended. So in the, on the cross, Jesus, Jesus entered a kingdom and established a kingdom. He entered a kingdom called Adam and he established a kingdom called You, you live no more but him. 
You know, I, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, that I live, but not I that live it, but Him that lives. The life that I now live, I live in the face of the Son of God. Who loves me and gives His life for me. So, in Him we live, in Him we move, in Him we have our being. We are swallowed by eternity. We came from Him, we have come back to Him. His righteousness is, we, we are in His righteousness, we are in His holiness, we are in His wisdom, we are in His destiny, we are in His eternity, we are in everything, we are in Him. In Him forever. Forever. And this has achieved. In Christ, there is no devil. In Christ, there is no hell. In Christ, there is no curse. In Christ, there is no death. We have arrived. So there is no hell. There is no devil. There is no death in Christ. And Christ is not a promise, it's a fulfillment. When Jesus said, finished, said, Joy, you have arrived. All the journey of eternity has happened. So we live from eternity to eternity to eternity forever. We are in Him. Hallelujah! Forever. Forever. That is why all things work together for our good. All things work together for our good. We are not impressed everything that happened. Nothing has death in it. Anything that comes your way has no death in it. Don't, don't, don't kick your back and bind. Don't allow everything to happen. Allow everything to happen. 2023 is coming. Allow. Don't, don't, don't. Going, going into wars is dead. It's dead. Don't fast and pray. Allow. Everything has life. Everything you are in life. Where there is no death. Thank you, Father, for your grace, O oh God. Thank you for this revelation. Thank you for oneness in you, Jesus. In Christ, we are alive. In Adam, all died. In Christ, we have come into life. Let's begin to love him right now. Let's begin to appreciate. Let's begin to, begin to see yourself alive. And you, you are forever alive. Resurrection that people are talking about has already happened. We have risen in Christ. We are in Him. Father, we thank you for divine resurrection. We are, we are no more two with you. We are one with you. We are one with you, Jesus. Your will is, it is finished. It is finished, O oh God. Thank you, 
God, you are holy, Jesus. You are holy, Jesus. You are holy. The place of Christ is a place where through worshipers are, are risen. Be risen from there because the place of holy, holy is your name, Jesus. The place of it is finished. I'm not asking for anything now because it is finished now. I rest in your fullness. I rest in your fullness. And as you rest in this revelation, it, it multiplies, it increases. It increases. Father, we thank you, God, for you giving us something more than good, giving us a priceless revelation. Oh. Love you, God. Love you, Jesus. Holy is the Lamb. Holy is the Lamb. I shall fear no evil. I shall fear no evil. 
for you are with me. For you are with me, your Lord and your staff. Your Lord and your staff. They comfort me. They comfort me. You prepare the devil before me. You prepare the devil before me. In the presence of my enemies. In the presence of my enemies. You anoint my hair with oil. You anoint my hair. My cup overflows. My cup overflows. Surely. 